So this question is a little bit vague, it's a little bit tricky in terms of they're asking you to list elements of non-empty sets P and Q um, where P isn't equal to Q which satisfy the following conditions. So there's four separate questions here and in each of these questions we have to come up with um, elements in set P. So I'm just going to do um, my curly brackets like this and elements in set Q. And there's infinite answers to a question like this. We have to be creative in terms of we just have to come up with some elements that satisfy this first condition, which is that the number of elements in both circles is going to be equal to the number of elements in P added to the number of elements in Q. And think about this. If we're going to have the number of things in uh, the two circles all together, equal to what's in P and what's in Q, well then clearly we can't have anything in the middle. So I'm going to just list down um, a couple of things that are in P. So let's say A and B. So I'm coming up with any elements at all. So they say that um, P and Q cannot be equal. Also they say that they're non-empty sets, so there has to be some things in each side. And I can see now that in P, the number of things in P is 2. The cardinal number of P is 2. Okay, well, what will I have in Q? Well, let's say in Q, I'm going to have C, D, and E. So the number of things in Q is 3. And how many things are in P union Q? Well, the number of things in P union Q is clearly 5. So you can see you had to be a little bit creative by coming up with um, the elements yourself. And they could be anything. Like, I mean, I picked um, two elements in P and three elements in Q. And 2 plus 3 um, is obviously equal to 5. But you could pick anything. I could have said that there was two elements in Q, in which case the cardinal number of Q is 2. And then what would the cardinal number of P union Q be? Well, it would have been 4. And 4 is equal to 2 plus 2. Um, and then clearly these would be the list of elements. So the answer to the question is these lists, but they just have to satisfy this condition. Again, what was the key to this question? We had to come up with uh, elements or a number of elements so that when you added the number in P to the number in Q is the number in um, them all together, which means we couldn't have had anything in the middle. If you had something in the middle, for example, let's say we had put P, um, let's say we put B, sorry, in the middle. Well, then the number of things in P is 2. The number of things in Q is 3. But what's the number of things in P union Q? Well, it's 1, 2, 3, 4. And so 4 isn't equal to 2 plus 3. And so that wouldn't be a correct solution. So going back to the solution I had originally, um, I had C, D, and E. I had A and B were in uh, P. And then my solution was that the number of things in P, 2, plus the number of things in Q, 3, is equal to the number of things in P union Q, which was 5. And so my answer is A and B are in P, and in Q I have C, D, and E. But the key here is, this is a very open-ended question. There's infinite solutions to this. Um, and I'm just trying to pick solutions that are, you know, fairly manageable in terms of, there's no point me putting 20 things in P and 20 things in Q because it gets quite confusing. So that's question one. Let's have a look at question two. So in question two, they say that the condition is that the number of things in P um, union Q um, cannot be equal to the number of things in P added to the number of things in Q. And this is quite easy because this is where we have something in the middle. So for example, I'm going to put um, A, B, and let's say C in the middle, and then D and E on the uh, circle Q, uh, but not in P. So if we look at this one, what's in P? Well, there's A, B, and C. There is three elements, so the cardinal number of P is three. What's in Q? Well, one, two, three, which is another three things. But how many things are in P union Q? One, two, three, four, five. And five isn't equal to three plus three. So if we put something in the middle, well, then P union Q is never equal to P plus Q or the cardinal number of P plus Q. Okay, let's write down what's in P. So P is the elements um, A, B, C. And Q is the elements C, D and E. And you can see that they share this one C. And if you think of what they're kind of trying to do with a question like this, when they ask a question, they're testing your knowledge, obviously, but they're also trying to teach you something. Here they're teaching you that if you want the number of things in P and the number of things in Q to be the same as P union Q, well, then the intersection 
has to be zero. And if you want um, the number of things in P and the number of things in Q not to be equal to the number of uh, things in P and Q, um, well then P intersection Q can't be zero. There has to be something in the middle. And so they're trying to teach you something as well as ask you questions. Okay, what about the one where it says um, the number of things in P without the number of things in Q is equal to the null set. So let's think about this. Um, the hashtag, the number of things in P without Q has to be a null set. Well, that's quite easy. All they're saying here is that we can't have anything in P without Q. We need to have a null set in here. So no elements in that section. P without Q is that section here. That has to be a null set. Well, we can have anything we like then. I'm going to have A, B, C, and D. Now, I've just randomly put anything in those. But that you know that's all I need to do is put anything in these two regions of the circle. Um, so if I want to write down what's in P, P is uh, A and B, A and B. And what's in Q? Q is A, B, C, and D. And what's the number of things in P without Q? Well, in this example, there is nothing in uh, P without Q. Okay, so let's have a look at the fourth one. So P intersection Q is equal to P. Now, it doesn't say cardinal number. They're not saying the number of things. All they're saying here is we have to come up with elements in a set P and elements in a set Q such that the intersection is equal to P. Well, that's quite easy. That just means that what I'm going to do is Anything I put in P has to go in the middle here. So if I put in, let's say, A and B, well then P intersection Q is A and B. And what's P? P is also A and B. So I'm just going to fill in some other elements in Q. Why do I have to fill in some elements in Q? It says P and Q can't be the same sets. And if I don't put anything in Q, um, in this region Q without P, well then P and Q will both be the set of elements A and B, and that wouldn't make any sense. So I'm going to just put in one element in Q to make sure it's not the same as P. And what's in P? Well in P we have A and B. And what's in Q? Q we have A, B and C. And then P intersection Q is obviously A and B. And P is the elements A and B. And are they equal to each other? They are equal to each other in this case. And again, infinite answers to this. I mean, you just have to place things in a diagram. And again, infinite solutions to this. I mean, we can come up with any possible infinite amount of scenarios of letters that we could put in here, as long as we don't place anything in this section. Okay, one thing you'll notice is that I, I drew a universe in this um, question. There was no need for a universe in a question like this. The question um, doesn't refer to anything that's outside of um, the circles P and Q. Um, and so I just had a box around it, but actually didn't need it for this question.